house. I don't have a clock here, and that's good like that. I have right? a clock myself, <laughs> and that is the one that counts. <laughs> I will well, uh, tell you when you have three minutes to of go. Of course. Oh, that's cheating. That's not cheating. That's cheating. That's not cheating. The question, and Manuel still has to learn, right? The question should be much more accurate. There will be no more surgery of the kind we do today for chronic rhinosinusitis with nasal polyps type 2 in 2028. If you ask that question, no doubt. Why is that? Of course, these monoclonals that come up now, they are not for non-type 2. So we have to say type 2. And of course, what we base our decision today on is the type of surgery we do today. So what do you do with this patient? It's a true story. That patient had, when I saw him, he was 20 years. Sorry, Klaus. Can we switch off the lights and the first row here so that we can better read and see the pictures? I have a third of seconds. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, this patient had three surgeries when I saw him with 20 years. What do you offer him? Surgery number four? Give him a sort of a ticket for surgery number five a year later? What? Proper operation. Not the kind of things we normally do. Because we obviously do not very good surgery. Of course, every individual, we all do surgery and never relapse. I know this story. But in synced elsewhere, they don't do that kind of surgery. And that is here, three university ENT clinics in the US, of course. That's synced <coughs> elsewhere, right? No, it's not synced elsewhere. That is standard. And they have published 2016, so yesterday, that with 190 cases, I think, after six months, well, nearly 40% were back and at 18 months, 40% were back with polyps. So is that the kind of surgery we will do in 2028? I hope not. Because that's clearly not the answer. This is not good enough. At least for the first two or three years, we should try to get really the recurrence rate down to near to or less than 10%. OK. Why will surgery alone not be the solution because this is a immunologic disease. Look at asthma. Do we operate? Do we take out the lungs because someone has asthma? Not really, right? There are a lot of cells and these are all dysregulated and it's very complex and different mechanisms but the decisive mediators here, our immunological knives are IL-4, where is it? So we're here, 5, 13, IgE. These are our real knives for that kind of disease. Now we understand, and it's quite recent, this is 2017, but it developed over the last decade. And here we have this sort of famous JCI 2016 paper from my group, showing that this one, of course we operate. Sure, we do a great job. But that is non-type 2. Here it is getting more and more difficult. And if you go to that type, this will be really a challenge to do a very nice surgery. A surgery that overcomes the immunology, because the immunology will tell us, not the surgeon skill so much. <coughs> of course, again, we have to change the surgery, but if the <coughs> IgE is low, 
no surgery, no recurrence, no recurrent surgery, if it's higher than that. Actually, ladies and gentlemen, these patients have recurrence in 80% over 10 years. And in 40%, they need at least one more surgery. So that actually is not really the solution. It is not a surgical disease. Now, if we look at it a little bit more differentiating, and we say, yes, surgery, non-type 2 surgery, sure. And we are great in that. Modern type 2, hmm, we are getting a little bit in conflict already. And there's a lot of how much should we do, and is this too, too radical, and this empty nose, and I don't know what all these arguments are. But we have to understand that we have to do more than here. And here, in that situation, we really need to do the whole job. Now, who does that normally now, including graft three? Totally mucosa out. Who does that? Come on, guys. Nobody? Well, then you have to change. This kind of surgery will not be good for the most severe type of inflammation. And that's what we propose. I don't have to repeat that. Green means yes, you can take that away. Red means no, don't take that away. Because that's the epithelium we need to re-epithelialize. OK, so the kind of surgery you all, because nobody raised their hand, does today, we will not do in 2028 for severe type 2 chronic rhinosinusitis with little problems. Okay? This is how it looks later. No disease, no polyps, everything fine. Not dry noses, but really nice aspects. And the other solution, of course, as I told you, it's not a surgical disease, will be our knives, IL-5, IL-4 receptor alpha, IgE. Of course, I have to say, at the moment, these are proof of concept studies. But think further. Who of you takes part in a dupilumab study at the moment? One, two, three, four. What is your experience? Come on, fast, fast. I have only, no, that's not enough. Come on. Five minutes. What did you see? Reduction in nasal polyp score. And uh, but the effect lasted for about three, four months. How long, what, what study did you take? The, the one year study? Uh, 14, one, four, one, four, six. So it's a half a year. No. Who does take part in the one year study? Okay. One year study. Yeah? Good what? results. Good results yeah. means what? Um, reduction of the nasal polyps. Reduction? Yes. Disappearance. <laughs> he just convinced you. <laughs> no. Who saw that polyps totally disappear? You didn't take part in the... In the <laughs> <laughs> there is no doubt. There is no doubt. So, okay. What do we do here? We antagonize IL-4 receptor alpha. Difficult to understand. But what we do is we go for... Let's go back. We go for IL-4. We go for IL-13. They cannot work anymore. And that will lead to the reduction of IgE. And it will lead to the reduction of chemotaxis of eosinophils into the tissue. So you have actually an anti-IL-4-5-13 IgE drug in one. And that's my candidate. So. This is how it looks. Yes, reduction over 16 weeks, but ladies and gentlemen, this goes on. It's not finished after four months. This goes on tremendously. We have a 75% reduction of your disease burden. Are you tired? Yeah, you're boring me. <laughs> <laughs> As I said to you, Manuel still has to learn. <laughs> they smell, smell, important, eh? No, 
smell. After eight weeks, after four weeks, actually, it's not a double-blind placebo-controlled study because you know them. After four weeks, they come say, doctor, the first time since five years I smell. So what do you say? Oh, that's placebo? No, it does not. And it's written, reduce need for surgery in severe nasal polyposis with mepolizumab. And you can take the others also. I'm not focusing on one only. I just tell you a little bit my preference. What would you say, imagine the future may look like this, from there to there, from there to there. Do you need surgery here? Right. The septum. The septum will stay with us. Septoplasty, no doubt. Anti-IgE doesn't do anything on the septum. You're right. That kind of surgery, yes. But polyps gone with eight, eight, eight months Complaints gone within six weeks, smell back within four weeks, no pain, no risk. No side effect risk. Ah, not in that case, you know, we all know these cases from some elsewhere that can happen, but never in our hospital. And, but again, here we don't have these risks. And please do not forget the patient's voice. Now, if you give these two possibilities. Do you want surgery number four, or do you want a monoclonal antibody like that? What do you think they vote for? <laughs> for what? <laughs> so I think the future, and certainly 2028, and that's not maybe the latest for 2028, will very much look into what do we have to deal with and how do we go further. Your surgery will look different for these patients and the medication will look totally different. And the future is very near. It's actually not, we don't have to wait till 2028 because that will be just two or three years and we have the first drug for the indication nasal polyposis. If you want to more, learn more, serine, top immunology, or our surgery course. Thank you so much.